Alright, so this is the uh, first video now of the uh, Curve Tracer build portion of this series. Um, we got the uh, uh, this, the ICO up here sitting on the shelf, and this is where I'm going to have it. Uh, it's pretty easy to see. And it's hooked up to the Curve Tracer circuit, which is on the breadboard right now, just right here. Um, you can kind of see it down in the bottom corner of the video. And uh, so we're looking at a couple things on the oscilloscope. We're looking at the um, sine wave uh, signal, uh, test signal, which is generated by the um, curve tracer circuit um, used to uh, for testing the device, whichever, whatever type of device you're testing. And uh, we're also looking at the uh, voltage uh, coming out of the... Uh, curve tracer so this voltage will correspond to the actions that we see on the curve tracer screen uh, and I'll demonstrate that here in a minute so right now I'll set to uh, zero and um, there's no signal on the oscilloscope so first thing we'll do is we'll run the we'll run the uh, test signal up and uh, the way this is set up uh, it'll run up to about 15 volts on the output and so now we've got our test signal full up uh, showing about 15 volts our uh, sine wave uh, signal produced by the curve tracer here on the oscilloscope and if you watched on the uh, curve tracer there as we raise and lower the signal our uh, we draw a line a horizontal line across the screen because right now the the uh, test probes for the curve tracer are open and so in an open condition um, there's no vertical deflection so now if we we'll go and do a short test uh, what we'll see now is we'll see no horizontal deflection it'll all be vertical deflection and so there's our vertical deflection there and we can adjust this attenuator the vertical attenuator to give us more screen width or more screen uh, usage <clears throat> so alright so there's our open and our short tests now we'll uh, we'll put uh, we'll put a device I've got a um, this is a one in uh, four five seven uh, just a little silicon diode uh, we'll put that in to circuit and we'll look at that way that looks on the screen so right now we've got uh, nothing on the screen because we have no signal applied so now as we start to raise our signal we notice there that we've got some deflection so what that means there is I'll take this signal down to zero again and as we start applying a voltage through the diode this PN junction on the diode once the PN junction starts conducting, we will uh, we'll see that conduction on the screen, and that's that uh, right there where it starts to bend. Take that 90 degree uh, bend there on the screen is the point at which the diode turns on. If I was looking at, say, for instance, uh, a Zener diode, so we'll do that now. We'll put a Zener diode in here. Uh, so I'm going to take this uh, Zener, which I know to be it's a 12 volt uh, 1N4742 Zener diode. So we'll put that in circuit now to test. And we'll start uh, applying our test signal. Alright, so there is our first deflection there. So you notice that on about, uh, on here about 5.5, uh, 0.6 of a volt. Uh, we get our first knee, which is the forward breakdown of the Zener diode, which is just a typical diode in that case. But now as we continue to apply in the reverse bias, and here again, so we'll change the scale so that we can see all of the uh, trace. And there's our second knee there. So now, <clears throat> With the Zener diode being reverse bias, we get our second knee on 
the, on the curve, and that's the point at which the uh, Zener the Zener diode actually starts conducting in the uh, I guess the Zener rever uh, the reverse bias Zener function of the diode. So it's now would be uh, conducting to maintain if in circuit conducting to maintain that 12 volts, and so. so um, you know, another useful, you know, you can use this to determine your, your Zener characteristics of your diodes, your turn on. If you wanted a, a Zener to, with a particular turn on characteristic or you wanted to match, or if, uh, I've even used this just to determine the Zener breakdown voltage of diodes that I had laying on the bench that I don't have a part number or I don't know where they came from. You know, something else you can use it for. You can determine that characteristic. So there we go. We notice that. Uh, <clears throat> that uh, breakdown uh, right there at about the 11.1 volts is where that's going to break down so that's where we're going to start conducting in the Zener region so this one turns on a little bit early uh, another thing we got uh, the trace you probably can't see it I can see it it's just slightly um, not horizontal <clears throat> There's an adjustment on the in the circuit to compensate for that, adjusting the slope. Uh, it it's on a trimmer. I'll probably bring that to ex, to an external control, um, just so that I can make adjustments. Because this with this uh, uh, CRT being a, um, <clears throat> an electrostatic type, any kind of metal will can affect that uh, trace and. I don't really feel like going in this thing all the time and having to fool the CRT. So I'll probably just put an external control to let me uh, compensate for that slope on the screen. <clears throat> Another thing we're going to do is uh, we'll feed uh, the voltage out on a rear terminal uh, to the multimeters so that I can read accurately on a, on a multimeter. And I'll probably hook the rear terminals up on one of these so that I can just push the button and switch and not have to fool with test leads, just have it always hooked in to the back of the meter. There's also a um, a uh, turn off circuit for the seat to to prevent CRT burn in, and I'll incorporate that into my build also.